Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Miss Inez Stepman, Senior Policy Analyst, Independent Women's Forum. Uh, Ms. Stepman, good to have you on the show. How are you? I'm well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. We're going to keep it topical. Today is the anniversary of the attack on the Capitol, January 6th. And we are going to talk about what that means to this country, what it meant to the country when it happened. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about that topic. So if you would give us your sentiment and I'll respond. Sure, I, I think that obviously every person um, who d- commits political violence uh, should be arrested, charged, given the full due process of the law. Uh, and then if convicted, put in prison. Um, I think that a blanket condemn- condemnation on political violence is always a good thing. Um, But I think the real lesson of January 6th is what happens when you allow political violence to escalate and escalate and go with unpunished. Eventually, people will start to get the idea that in fact, the way to get their causes attention is is to riot, is to commit political violence. And I think unfortunately that lesson has largely been lost and, and instead, we are talking about, um, you know, about this as, as something that it wasn't, like a, a coup against the United States. Um, I think that kind of hyperbolic language actually detracts from the real problem that we saw on January 6th, which is what happens in a republic when there's escalating political violence that goes without answer for, uh, you know, for months um, and starts to become a cycle where both sides participate in politi- political violence. Uh, I think that's very dangerous for a republic. Okay. So let's do it this way. Do you believe the election was stolen away from Donald Trump? No, you mean do you think that, that uh, no, I, I think that Joe Biden won this election. I do think okay. that the laws in multiple states were changed in quasi legal ways, ostensibly for coronavirus um, in terms of mail-in balloting, mass mail-in balloting. I think that that does not engender confidence in elections. Um, and that's why I support a lot of the red state efforts to try to roll back some of those changes that happened directly before the election. I think they caused a lot of chaos and a lot of mistrust. And, and frankly, there have been uh, reports, about, there have been um, challenges to the election <laughs> and to, to trusting the election system for both sides. Um, and, and no, but I, do I believe that Joe Biden is rightfully the president of the United States? Yes, yes, I do. All right, so you agree that the whole, the election was stolen from Donald Trump is a lie. You agree with that? I mean, that's a logical connection to what you just stated to me, right? I I think that Donald Trump may, but that would that would require me getting into the head of Donald Trump as to whether no, it's no, a it lie. doesn't. No, ma'am. All due respect, Miss. Right, but but it does not I believe that. that the statement that the election was stolen from him is is incorrect. Okay, virtually one hundred percent of the people he believes that or not. Well, he says he believes it was stolen. Right. Okay, you don't have to jump in his head. He told you what he believes. Um, virtually 100% of the people if that you're committed- You're asking me a question about lying versus statements of fact, right? If you and I disagree about what happened, that doesn't necessarily mean one of us is a liar. Yeah, it does. It means Trump is lying. Uh, the election was well, not I, that, stolen. That's what you're asking me to do, to get inside the head of somebody. I, he could perfectly well believe that the election was stolen. Well, well, let me put it this way. A liar, okay. but I don't- We're, we're that that's splitting statements. hairs on a distinction that doesn't make a difference. It is in fact a lie that the election was stolen, correct? I'm answering the question you asked me. It is in fact a lie that the election was stolen, correct? It is not true that the election is stolen. A lie requires a statement of mind about what somebody believes. Gotcha, I see the game you're playing, we can play that game. All right, Ms. Stepman, let me ask you this. Virtually 100% of the people that stormed the Capitol committed an act of domestic terrorism. They believe that the election was stolen. When you say in your proclamation, your opening statement, you said that this was not about a coup. But it was about the overthrow yeah. of the government because literally the individuals who have already pleaded guilty and many of them who are waiting their fate with the Justice Department said they had a plan to stop the certification of the election, which would have created an unconstitutionally defined scenario, which gives us a constitutional crisis in which they get to make up the rules as they go. They literally had a plan to stop a constitutionally mandated 
protocol known as certifying the electoral college. So when you say this was not an attempt to overthrow or an attempt at a coup, these are the same people who said this was our attempt to stop the certification of the election, to overthrow the legitimate government that would be coming in by way of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And when Mike Pence did not go along with the program, this is the same group that said we need to now kill him. So if, if that's the case, then why out of the 700 people who are currently charged, um, some of them are waiting trial, some of them already gone through trial, um, they're charged with assault uh, as they should be. They're charged with trespass as they should be. They're charged with interfering with a government procedure, which you just referred to. None of them are charged with sedition. None of them are charged with attempting to overthrow the government. Um, you know, they're, they're, none of them are charged with treason. This this is the this is Joe Biden's I'm Justice happy Department. I'm to answer that question. These these charges. So my question is, if, if everything, if, if this is a organized coup as opposed to a bunch of people who broke the law, wrongly broke the law and are now being punished for it by the justice system, um, why is it that none of those 700 people are charged with treason, with insurrection, with I'm happy the government? To, they, I'm happy. the government can't prove their case. Well, madam, I'm happy to answer your question. All right, number one, you're incorrect on the facts. There are 40 defendants who actually were charged with conspiracy, 40. Okay, many of them were members of the Oath Keepers. Uh, Conspiracy to overthrow the government, madam. Go ahead and tell me what you think it was. Tell me what you think the conspiracy was. It was to stop the official process. It was to stop the official process. It was to stop the official process of the Electoral College being certified. That That would that would have been effect. That would have been effect. Say that again. That's the interference with with government procedure. Madam, I understand what that would have done if you stopped the certification of the Electoral College. You then do not have a legitimate government to certify in the victory of the presidential election because the Constitution is silent on what would happen if you do not certify within that time frame. That was the expressed intent of the conspirators who engaged in that activity. You do not agree? So I I, I totally agree that there okay, were uh, then, so what crazy are you arguing people. About? I, I totally agree that there are some crazy people who committed political violence in the Capitol and some that they were attempting to stop that they were attempting to stop the vote, um, rightly certifying the Electoral College. I don't agree that that, that constitute that a few like people um, running around and who are then prosecuted for it was anything close to a, you know a coup. Okay, there are people <laughs> who have crazy okay. ideas in this country every day. The question is whether they had any opportunity right. or came anywhere close to carrying it out. They didn't. And, and I you, think, frankly, you know, making this this entire um, you know sort of remembrance over what is at the end of the day, several hundred people, some of them, you know, mentally ill with horns on their heads and zip ties, pretending that those people actually came close to overthrowing the government and the Constitution Madam, of the United States you do is a farce. It's Ms. a farce, Stepman. and it gives them far more power than they ever Ms. had. Stepman, allow me to respond to a couple of things you've said. Number one. Just because they were not successful does not mean what they did was not egregious and illegal and worthy of severe prosecution. It's like you're arguing that someone who committed attempted murder should not be prosecuted because they did not actually commit murder. Number Number two, let me make it very clear to your question about why they have not been prosecuted the way they should be. The chief circuit judge of that jurisdiction went on record and said that what these prosecutors are doing with these cut out plea deals that are basically carbon copies of everybody else is not justice. And it does not fit according to the chief federal judge what the Capitol rioters or terrorists did. Now let's be clear, you and I may actually agree on some things here. I do not think the federal government is always 100% right, I do not. I do not believe the federal government has prosecuted these individuals to the fullest extent of the law. I do not believe that if we were talking about a band of of over 1000 or 2000 black people, or if this was a Black Lives Matter protest saying they did not like the direction of the country and they stormed the Capitol, or if their last names would have been Muhammad, that the narrative that you have taken would be the same. Am I correct on that? Uh, I think we have actually a perfect counterexample. We had the entire summer of 2020 
when many cities in this country uh, had large parts of, of their downtowns burned down and we didn't see corresponding prosecutions. We had over 30 That's untrue. deaths. During that summer, that's not true, madam. People got prosecuted. There, people did get prosecuted, madam. But answer my question. Answer my question, madam. Is your contention that the Joe Biden's Justice Department is not fully prosecuting? You damn right. That's my contention. That's my contention. That's my proclamation. That's my belief. And the truth is. Uh, and the cannot truth is, fully prosecute uh, you know cases in his justice department. Um, you know maybe we do agree actually. Yeah, I, I we, don't yeah, trust yeah, the justice not, department listen, let, let to me barely be prosecute clear. every I, single case before it. I I don't either. But it seems okay. to me that, that we have done plenty of prosecution on January sixth. It really? seems to me actually that it, in in our haste to prosecute January sixth, we've left a lot of these people for an inordinately long time before trial and pre-trial detention. Bordering okay. on violating their due Stephen, process. I have limited time because we have a show right after mine. So let me ask you this plainly. Do you believe what happened on January 6th was in fact a terrorist attack by definition? No, I think it was a riot in the Capitol. And for that reason, it was disgraceful. And I hope that everybody that participated in it gets their due process and their punishment is, under the law. Madam, what is the definition of terrorism? I think it, so then now we're going into like the academic definition of terrorism. No, ma'am, the working legal definition of terrorism. Okay, I, I think that it, it, you can either have a loose definition of terrorism, by which case everything that legal happened definition in 2020 of terrorism. is also political terrorism, um, or you can tighten the definition of terrorism uh, in an attempt to uh, you know to take life and to, to seriously commit violence on behalf of um, of a political cause or for a foreign foreign actor. Okay, okay. I, I think yeah, that's you, you want to call yeah, you're not, terrorism. You're not right. You're just I think that we stuff lived up. through an entire summer of terrorism in 2020. I'd okay, like to so keep definitions a little tighter. I'd like let to me distinguish go ahead and give you the between 2,000 dead Americans on 9/11 um, yeah. and and uh, the single person who was killed, uh, directly killed um, on January 6th, who was herself uh, in the act of committing a crime. Okay, I'm going to go back to the original question that I posed to you that you were unable to answer correctly. The definition, the legal definition of terrorism is the unlawful use of violence and or intimidation, especially against civilians, but also non-civilians in the pursuit of political aims. Does that not fit the crimes that are in question about January 6th? It's it's a question of degree. And if we're going to include January 6th in, in that definition, I think that we have to include a lot of other incidents that happened all throughout the summer of 2020, which are also acts of violence committed against civilians and against the government in the service of a political cause. So you I do think agree that, that what happened well on January 6th was an act of domestic terrorism then? It fits, correct? I, if, if, if you are willing to admit that we are suffered under multiple acts of domestic terrorism all through the summer of 2020, and you want to broaden the definition that far, then I guess I did January not broaden it, ma'am. This, this, this is the legal right. definition. So, so of yeah, terrorism. it's a question of degree. If you think that any political, any violent act committed in service of a political ideology is domestic terrorism, and you want to make no distinction of degree between 3,000 lives lost due to, you know, Outside terrorism and um, you know the single what death on January sixth. You want to make no terrorism. degree distinctions, then we must fairly call Can everything that happened in the Ms. summer Stepman of 2020 define. as also domestic terrorism that resulted okay. in the loss of Ms. 30 Stepman. lives. Ms. Stepman, I would like you to define the terminology you just created called outside terrorism. What is your definition of that? I, I do believe there's a difference between an attack on the country outside and political unrest internally. Do you think there's no dif distinction between those two things? Hell if no. If for no other reason, different. then we, we need to- The KKK to, you know, is American born be very and bred. What are you talking about? The KKK are domestic terrorists, right? Right. Right. Okay. So do you, you, want, think, you want to talk, about, Madam? Think about this, Miss Stepman. Want, do you, want you want really to think, about domestic Ms. Terrorism Step, Ms. and Stepman, we want to define it as you, you have just said it, that there's a difference is common in the United States between, history, and most importantly, Stepman, is common uh, for the gentlemen. last you know six six months, okay. and all the way through back to the summer of 2020. You if you want to, to create that loose definition of domestic terrorism, which mm -hmm. I think is quite dangerous. And the reason I think is quite dangerous not to distinguish between, for example, what happened in 9-11 is that, and to distinguish between foreign actors and domestic is because when you're talking about domestic actors, you're talking about Americans who have constitutional rights. Whatever their All political right, step, ideology is, you're talking about Americans who have constitutional to some of this rhetoric. rights. And we do not use the same you apparatus to allow that we deal with respond? foreign terrorism. Against our own people, would you, you agree that there's a danger of doing that? Are you afraid to allow me to respond, madam? 
Can I respond to you? Okay, terrorism was already defined before any external force or another country was involved. Terrorism is simple. Terrorism, once again, is the unlawful use of violence and or intimidation, especially against civilians. But also it can apply to non-civilians in the pursuit of political aims. That is your definition of terrorism. Now, can we be very clear about the number one terrorist organization in America or the number one terrorist group in America. You know we have terrorist groups right here in America, right? Okay, and you would agree that organizations like the KKK are terrorist organizations, correct? Have they been prosecuted? This is a legal distinction, frankly, that I'm not familiar with the body of law of how the the KKK was prosecuted. But sure, for the purposes of this discussion, I'm happy to call them domestic terrorists. If they commit violence. Good, so now that you call the KKK domestic terrorists, there are many white supremacists, white supremacists that subscribe to that ideology, who were armed, went to the US Capitol. They assaulted other police officers. That fits the definition once again of terrorism by way of our wording definition of terrorism. Why is that a hard conclusion? If that's, or if that's the definition that you, if you want to use that definition, no, then I'm would you admit you, that I'm trying to see there can are, you think there about these things logically? Summer of 2020. That okay, so let's use this for the sake of argument. Let's use this definition. Would you admit that there are multiple instances during the summer of 2020 that also qualify as violence or intimidation against a civilian, um, especially against a civilian? I guess it's in your definition, um, committed on behalf of a political ideology. Would you not agree that the the riots that took place and the deaths that took place over the summer of 2020 on behalf of a political ideology, by your definition, also qualify as domestic terrorism? Ma'am, any unlawful use of violence and intimidation to seek a political aim is terrorism. It is clear, it is concise. Here's the issue I have with some of you all that that argue and try to defend what happened on January 6th, even to some degree. Everybody, everybody who stormed that Capitol got the benefit of being a majority white mob. Because if that would have been a black mob or a brown mob storming that capital, the narrative would be different. And you the response have would have been different. You Madam, have do you believe, do you believe that if that black happened, lives matter, if a protest of district. black lives matter would have stormed that capital <laughs> last black year on January 6th, do church. you believe it would have been the same response. Bunker. Is that domestic terrorism? You can't answer the question. I'm, I'm, Why can't I'm you? you that your the question is in front of you, Madam. In all due respect, I pose that question to you first. Of BLM equally as it applies to those on January 6th. I believe that anybody who commits political violence should be tried. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question, Madam. I got three minutes but before I got to go to the next not show. applying that okay. definition to groups Statement. What was the what was the percentage of violence recorded last year at Black Lives Matter protests? Are we back to the mostly peaceful thing now? Well, Madam, I'm asking you a question. During those riots across the country, thirty deaths, a hundred police officers injured. Some of them very police officers injured way more individuals than even than even the noted um, injuries that happened by other entities. You have to understand this about the movement of Black Lives. There will always be individuals who try to take advantage and hijack the message, always. No different in the Black Lives Matter movement. I've been to Black Lives Matter marches, I've been at rallies, I've spoken at their events, I've led some of the efforts. And I have also been an organizer in that field for years. You will always have entities that come in and try to disrupt the progress and process of a legitimate movement, Madam. But remember, Madam, Madam. Well, Adam, I'm, at I'm the trying rally to make this on January point. 6th in front of the Capitol who Adam, did not commit Ms. violence Stepman. also. Nevertheless, here we are talking right, about Stepman, January 6th. So we both afraid. agree that a minority within a political movement can commit you political violence. Here's the difference. Here's the difference, and I hope you follow my linear logic here. The difference is you will not find any violent rhetoric on any Black Lives Matter website. You will not find any Black Lives Matter organizer calling for the destruction of people or property. 
You will not find Black Lives Matter organizers saying get your guns, saying get your guns and grenades. However, however, Ms. Stepman, you will find it on the other side. They have not hijacked the message on the other side. The message on the other side is that get your guns, get your grenades, get your weaponry and get to the Capitol. Use no, violence, use destruction. It, that is their message. Frank, That's not the message the of Black Lives Matter. The United States gave money to bail out people, not who use rhetoric, violent rhetoric. Okay. All right? People who All actually right. committed violence. The Vice President of the United States donated and encouraged people, other people, to donate to bail Man, out people from jail who show. actually Ms. committed Stephen, violence. I'm sorry, you cannot not be helped. Now. I appreciate your time, though. Thank no, you so, for being so, yeah, on the show. I appreciate it too. You can't be helped. No, no. Neither can All right, you. thank you so much. Have a good day.